in these kind of normalization technique is we will spread out our design into smaller tables and multiple joints. So you will have a very wide. So friends, if you are working in the data industry and if you have ever been involved in discussing, planning, designing or implementing a data model, uh, this common uh, dilemma or confusion of whether to keep your data model normalized versus denormalized might have crossed your way. So in this video, we will take a look into the specifics of what is normalization technique, what is denormalization technique with the help of a real life example. We'll understand the pros and the cons of these two techniques and the end, at the end of this video, we will understand which technique is better than the other. And if you are new to these techniques, even then this video will make sure you have a common understanding, a basic understanding of these techniques to start your journey. Hello friends, welcome to ITK Funde, your own channel where we make IT interesting for everyone. I'm Anshul Tiwari and without further ado, let's get on with our understanding of what is normalization versus denormalization. So let's get started. So friends, in a small village, uh, three brothers ran uh, a family business wherein these three brothers owned individual shops of uh, grocery, clothing and sweets. So customers from across the village used to go to these uh, different shops to buy items. And they, they had their individual uh, uh, registers to maintain, which they used to maintain individually within their shops. And at the end of the month, all these three uh, brothers used to sit together and understand that okay let's analyze that what all customers are uh, the regular customers of all these three shops so they wanted to give special offers to those customers who are regularly coming buying grocery buying clothes and sweets from all three brothers so they wanted to get the list of all those uh, customers from the village but it was very tedious because these three registers were maintained separately uh, in individual shops and whenever they used to do this exercise at the end of the month they used to you know combine this data see the uh, customer name and then match the data across various registers so it was very very slow and tedious so they came out with an idea that instead of having individual register where they will have individual items to record for individual uh, you know specific shops they will have a combined register and this combined register will have data entered for all the three uh, shops so grocery clothing and sweets now this was a bigger register this was way bigger than the ordinary register because here the entries were made for uh, all the customers across all the three shops. So then there could be instances wherein you know a customer is coming and buying grocery but uh, you know uh, he is not buying anything from the other two shops. So in that case you know the data the register would just leave those uh, you know items blank for uh, clothing and suits and uh, likewise for other shops also. But the advantage of it was that when at the end of the month they used to see this register, they got all the details at one place. So they didn't have to look up all the different register, combine the data and you know the, the process of retrieving the data became very fast. So let's start with our understanding of normalization versus denormalization and specific features of these two techniques. So when we talk about normalization, it used to be and it currently is. Uh, pretty much the traditional way of storing the data into a traditional uh, OLTP system. And if you have heard uh, the normalization technique, there are different degrees of no normalization like first normal form, second normal form, third normal form. And there are certain strict rules and regulations with which you have to store the data. And that's why we have ACID compliant database. And these ACID compliant database ensures that we have no data redundancy, we have no data duplicacy or referential integrity is always in check. So these databases were made for very specific purposes of faster writes. So if you see, it was a traditional third normal form. You know, normalization uh, techniques are generally applicable to traditional third normal form databases. And it is generally for OLTP system which is used for transactional processing where we need heavy writes okay so obviously what they will do in these kind of normalization technique is we will spread out our design into smaller tables and multiple joints 
so you will have a very wide uh, you know data model very 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 complex looking data model wherein you will have one table joining to multiple several tables and uh, then whenever you are want to fetch the data you have to join it across all the tables so that's why when you are writing the data into a normalized database it's very fast take for example you have an employee table and you have an, a department table and then you have uh, employee attributes employee name employee id salary address etc and then you have a column uh, a key column which is department id and then using that department id you join it to a department table and get the department names from that particular table uh, to to understand which employee belongs to which department so now in this case if you want to get the data if you want to run the query that okay i want to understand which employee belongs to which department then it has to join it and sometimes the cost of joining is performance if your joins are very complex and it is adding multiple tables into your query it becomes very very slow so what if instead of putting everything together you bring the department name within the employee table and then what you will have you will instead of running two different uh, fetches uh, from employee and department you will have department name built inside the employee table and then you can have your separate department table to run and add additional attributes for department but in this particular case your employee table will have that particular department name so you can run the query exactly on that particular employee table so that's where we denormalize the data okay we we'll, which, which we'll understand after after this so understand that it it is good and and it is good for certain cases where you have write heavy applications where we have to focus on writing the data then you need to have a normalized database so now let's understand the different features of denormalization so denormalization as we have discussed works exactly in the opposite way and it intentionally introduces redundancy into the data model because we want intentional duplicacy or redundancy so that we have everything in one plate and we directly get it from that particular plate okay that particular table now having said that the caveat here is that you cannot have or you cannot afford to have incorrect data so whichever technique we are using for data denormalization we have to ensure that data correctness is intact so it is exactly opposite to normalization so it introduces redundancy it has bigger wider table uh, you know in a denormalized data you you know you have a lot of data within you know one particular table then you have obviously lesser joins because if you combine everything in one table then obviously your joins will get reduced and your performance will increase so on the flip side while it will provide you with faster reads when will it will come to writes it would be slower than a normalized data because as we understand we are you know putting everything in one particular table uh, and we are making sure that uh, the reads are faster so writes will take a hit one thing which i have missed uh, in the comparison is that uh, why we used to take normalization uh, uh, why we used to give priority to normalization previously was that in older times we had limited resources on the database so we wanted to consume it very judiciously and very very correctly and that's why we used to take normalization and we used to ensure that whatever space we are using is you know adequate but when the cloud computing came in when we had very cheap resources available on cloud uh, we had no issues uh, with denormalized data because the cost of queries uh, were very very cheap and instead of uh, you know having those multiple joins and taking uh, a lifetime to get the result uh, these cloud computing uh, resources said okay you give me one particular table dump everything in that particular table i'm fine with uh, you know some duplicacy i'm fine with some null values but if you give me one table i'll make sure that i get you the results in seconds so it actually wastes some resource denormalization wastes some resource but then in a bigger context it is very minimal when we talk about uh, the cost which we pay for a slower performance okay so yeah these are some uh, you know uh, some basic understanding of normalization versus denormalization but the bigger question now arises that which is better and when to choose what so let's take that call now so now as we understand what is normalization what is denormalization uh, here comes the interesting part of deciding and choosing which is better or which is not or when to go for which particular technique so in my perspective 
both the techniques are good in uh, in its own sense and you as a database architect or a data architect have to decide in your particular use case which particular technique would be more useful if you are building a write heavy intensive write intensive application suppose an ordering application wherein there are customers ordering something every two seconds three seconds every minute those kind of write heavy applications should have a normalized database or normalized data model whereas if you are building a data warehouse or a data lake solution where you have olap analysis where you have bi reports where you have uh, you know trend analysis reports which you need to run uh, then in those cases you need to have uh, denormalization but at any given point of time it is not mandatory that you have to normalize to the nth degree and then or uh, or you have to denormalize the data completely you can have best of both the worlds so if we go back to our first layman example uh, where we had three different shops okay so in, instead of combining everything into one particular register they could have also because like when you are entering everything in one register then it would impact your rights right while it will improve your reads so they could have taken a balanced approach so they could have a common register made for grocery and sweets because these two comes under edible items okay so they could have uh, made that so that one register is for that and one specific separate register for clothing so i hope we now understand what is normalization what is denormalization and when to choose what so friends if you like the video if you got some value out of it i'll really request you to hit that like button so youtube spreads it and shares it with someone who also want to learn uh, some it fundamental concepts on this channel and until next time guys thanks for all your support keep uh, liking this channel keep subscribing keep sharing it with your friends and colleagues and hit that bell notification so you know when uh, i upload my next video so until next time please keep learning keep sharing all the knowledge and yes keep hustling bye for now